Uh, so guys, um, this is the second part of the video. The first video talked about the basics of trigonometry, and this second part will apply the basics of trigonometry in in these sort of problems where you're given one angle, one measurement of one side, and you are asked to find out the rent of the other side. So one angle, one rent, and you're asked to find out the rent of one side. Okay. So here we we're gonna need a scientific calculator. A basic one will do. This is an FX five seven zero ES, which is completely allowed in Cambridge exams, and you can use any sort of calculator that is scientific and has the following functions: sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent. It'd be nice if it had more functions, but this one can do an alternative sign. So sine to the power of negative one, uh, the inverse of sine. So if you have those extra functions, it's also good. But you just need a calculator that has these three, sine, cosine, and tangent. So, over here, the first step to solving a problem like this is to use trigonometry. Trigonometry comes in really handy when you're using these sorts of um, problems. So over here, we need to find out what, what uh, values are given and which, which sine, cosine, or tangent which one of it uses these two values. So we need to identify them first. So this is the opposite, 25, so that's the op. And that is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the right angle. So opposite hypotenuse. So which which of it, which sine, cosine, or tangent, which one uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? And the answer obviously is sine. Sine uses um, the hypotenuse and the opposite, obviously. <clears throat> so here, here we go. We need to find sine 25. So the sine of 25 equals to A opposite over the hypotenuse. We need to calculate the value of A. So leave A on one side and multiply to both sides. So A equals 2 sine 25. And this is when it comes, comes in handy. When you have a calculator, you need a calculator for this sum because it will take you a few years to calculate what sine 25 is. It's going to be really co uh, complicated. So you need a scientific calculator and enter the values as follows. So 2 times sine 25. So look at this. 2 times sine 25. As in here. And you get the value which is 0 0.84523652235 and you're not going to expect you to write everything so write it to two decimal places max so 0 0.85 0 0.85 so that's 0 0.85 so we can conclude that the rent of A which is the opposite is 0 0.85 centimeters your calculator can calculate sine 1, sine 2 up, up to sine 270 a calculator can calculate so you need a calculator for these sort of sums. Next, we'll answer the black question in black. Put it in here and we'll put it in the little funny pack over here. And we'll take it again and I'll put the calculator over here. When it's needed. So here we're given a bit more inverse situation. Here the, the, the whole right angle triangle is turned around to form this sort of shape where this is turned around what, at 90 degrees maybe. So here we need to find down the rent of B. We're given 9, we're given the rent of the hypotenuse. <coughs> and B is uh, 260 degrees, that's the adjacent. And we need to use sine, cosine, or tangent. So which one uses the hypotenuse and the adjacent? Okay? Um, cos uses the hypotenuse and the adjacent because cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to use cos. So cos 60 equals to b over 9. And we're going to find b. So isolate b on one side and bring all the other values to the other side. So b equals 9 cos 60, which um, in turn equals um, to 9 times cos 60 which is uh, 4.5. 4 9 over 2, which is 4.5. That requires no explanation at all. So 
4.5 cm, so we can conclude that B equals to 4.5 cm. This is exactly how you work out values, unknown values in a in a right angle triangle. The conditions are a right angle triangle, one angle given, and one side given. And then you can be expected to use trigonometry to find the rent of the unknown side. It's as simple as that. Next, let's try something a bit harder, and this time it involves not only sine and cos, but it also involves tan. Let's take the black pen, and let's write the question down. This is the right angle, obviously, and that makes F 18 centimeters and this is uh, 28 degrees okay here 28 degrees is the angle that's given and this side 18 centimeters is given this side yeah that's the unknown variable we have to find out so we're given one angle one side and we're expected to find out the event of the one unknown side okay now we need to identify to 28 degrees what is 18 that will be the adjacent, so I'll just put ADJ over there. And this one will be the opposite, because it's directly opposite to um, 28 degrees. And which, which sine, cosine or tangent, which one actually uses the um, adjacent and the opposite? And that is tan. So tan 28 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So F equals 18 tan 20. Isolate F on one side. So use your calculator. 18 times tan 28. 18 times tan 28, you see? And then you get this. 9.5707697. You don't write all of that. You just take the first uh, two dozen more places. So that's like uh, 9.57. 9.57cm. 9 so this is 9, F equals 9.57 cm. So folks, that's how you express, or that's how you use trigonometry to f um, in a basic problems like this where you're expected to find the unknown side with one angle and one rent. Conditions are right angle, triangle, one angle, one rent, and at that point of time, you do need to use trigonometry. And you have to work it out by yourselves. Okay, folks, that's it for this video.